when I was in high school in Brooklyn, it was required that you make this retreat. And I did everything I could to get out of it because I wanted no part of it. But they wouldn't let me graduate, so I had to go with 50 of, I say, my barbarian classmates because in school that's what I felt they were. And they shipped us out to the end of Long Island across a ferry boat to a place called Shelter Island. And the Passionists ran this retreat house there called St. Gabriel's. And I think what I was so impressed with was that these men in black robes seemed to wield some kind of power, some kind of magic. And I was so surprised that they were able to get through my classmates, these teenagers, that I couldn't see teachers getting through. I didn't see their friends getting through. But these guys in black with these white hearts, they got through. And as a teenager, I knew something was special about them and it was just instinctual and I couldn't exactly explain it, certainly at that age. But what I saw in them, I saw a special and I knew that somehow I wanted a piece of it. And again, that was as a teenager would think of it and I didn't know what it was. And so when I went to college and I was working on Wall Street full time in a brokerage firm and I was going to college full time, it was this crazy year and it was very busy and I was looking at all these people around me who were very unhappy and very dissatisfied with their life. And I realized that I didn't want to live their life. Even my first year in college, I knew that, I could see that. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to do because they wanted me to go for my broker's license in this brokerage firm. So I called up that retreat center, St. Gabriel's on Shelter Island, and a priest answered. And I kind of hemmed and hawed and I said, you know, I feel like maybe I want to reconnect with that place in some way because I found such peace there. And he said, well, why don't you come out for the weekend? And so I was a little reticent because I didn't know what exactly it would mean. And I said, well, you know, I have this car and it might not make it out there. It's a duster. It doesn't drive very well. And he said, so you never heard of the Long Island Railroad? And so, I mean, what could I say? I had asked him. And so Friday found me on the Long Island Railroad going out to Greenport. And I took the ferry over and he picked me up. And as we're driving to the ferry, from the ferry to the retreat house, he says to me, by the way, did I tell you there's no retreat on this weekend? So I said, no. And he said, yeah, it's just going to be me and the guys I live with, the other passionists, and you. And this was on an island. And I wondered what I had gotten myself into. Um, but that weekend, I just lived with them. I worked with them. I prayed with them. I played cards with them. And I watched them. I really watched them and that same sense of peace, that same sense of connectedness, that same sense that they carried something around with them that I couldn't put my finger on returned. And that same sense that I wanted what they had returned. But I couldn't articulate it and I was afraid to articulate it. And so as this priest was driving me back to the ferry, he said to me, he's looking straight ahead, very cavalier, offhanded way, so did you ever think about doing this with your life? And I said, what? And he said, well, you know, like being a priest or a brother or religious. I said, no, thanks. And it kind of shut him down and shut me down. But I really couldn't get his question out of my mind and heart. Did you ever think about doing this with your life? Did you ever think about doing this with your life? And by the following, the end of that year, I was calling him back up to see what would it mean, what would it look like if possibly someday I were to think about doing this with my life. And by that fall, I was transferring colleges and entering the Passionist residence to consider what would it mean and what would I have to do and begin my studies. And I think it, it came back to, I saw in them something special. They had a community life, they had a vibrancy, they had a love for each other, they had a passion for the ministry, they had a passion for the passion to, to connect people suffering to the suffering of Jesus. And it all seemed to make sense to me. And even though I was very young, somehow, it came through to me, I got it, and I wanted what they had. And so I guess I was willing to change my life to get there. And as I look back on it, I mean, I've been a passionist, you know, 25 years now, and that same sense that I don't agree with everything we do all the time, and there have been low times, and times I think I should have stayed on Wall Street, and times I wish maybe I had done something else, you know, but everybody has that. I think you get married, you have that. You know, people all marry the wrong person. You know, or you choose a profession and you think, you know, why didn't I do this? But there's that underlying deeper sense, kind of that, that river of peace inside of me that says I made the right choice. And uh, I wake up and I'm happy about what I do every day. Happier, I think, than probably a lot of people who do stuff in their lives that maybe they're not 100% with. And so I don't know if I can ask more than that. And so I, I continue to live it because it makes sense to me. 
and I have a passion for it, and uh, it makes me happy. And I think I get a chance to really intersect people's lives in a very significant and deep way. I get to enter their lives in places where they don't allow anyone else entry, you know, because of my privileged position of being a passionate religious and a priest. And uh, I just think it's very special, and I don't think there are many other jobs, professions, careers, vocations that you can say that about. And what I'm doing now as a passionist is kind of many things. I mean, I help out in a parish in Harlem, a very poor parish, and I help out there on weekends and say mass. Uh, I'm a writer, and so I've written some books, and I try to use the message of the word through the written word, through books and spirituality. Um, I also now am involved in media efforts. Uh, I am going to be the director of the Passionist TV Mass. I also host a show for ABC Now on their cable network called Faith Matters Now, where I get to sit down every week and interview really interesting people about interesting themes. I think the media is so important in the church today, and especially in Roman Catholicism, because I think the Protestants in particular and the evangelicals have gotten so much further ahead in this area than we have. You know, people, you know, I, I give parish retreats too and missions, and people will say to me, you know, do you remember Fulton Sheen? You know, God, I mean, how long ago was Fulton Sheen? And people, that's who people still talk about because that's who made a difference for them. That's who used, they, they watched him on television. And, you know, we, we don't have that really much in our tradition anymore. And so in any way that we can try to reclaim it and really make ourselves available through the media and through the Internet and through television, I think it's, it's a wonderful way to spread the word. And we're going to touch a lot more people there than we ever will being able to go to parish, you know, give parish missions or retreats because, I mean, just... You have millions of people kind of available through the internet and through television, and what you say can really make a difference. And so I'm trying to direct my efforts in that way in um, the media and continue to do some writing, continue to do some preaching of parish missions, work in that parish in Harlem, and you know, whatever else comes your way. I mean, you meet people along the way that pull you in different directions, and you go where you need it. And I think as a passionist today, that's what I'm trying to do most.